It's been quite a rainy spring up here, which has actually given me ample amounts of time to make a new house tour, a complete and definite tour of the house. I've broken it down into a few sections, all the way from the outside to the inside, and I've talked about my favorite places and things and features of the house. Let's just jump back to a few days ago when it was sunny. I'm a pretty big believer that the most important part of a house is actually where it sits. Because I spend so much time outside that, I mean, I only come to the house to cook, to work or to sleep, but the rest of the time I'm just outside. And if it's somewhere that is inspiring and that makes exercise and just mindful time in nature more accessible, then I think it's much more important than what's inside the house to me. So the reason I leave in northwest Montana, I mean literally at the Canadian border, 60 miles away from the Canadian border, is because I want this out of my back door. Just pure, untouched wilderness. And we chose this piece of land which sits on a ski resort just so there could be frictionless access to the mountains and to all this. I mean, I, I can, can leave the house and go for a run go for a hike, go for a bike ride, without ever thinking about getting in my car. That's the magic of it. Little break, what is it, three, three miles in to the eight mile uphill. And it's a lovely day. This is the Bear Club. Look how cool the trees look. Arrows into the sky. Not bad, huh? Get home. You almost see the house down there. Almost. Welcome to the loft. This is where I spend most of my days. It's my office. It's been my office for the past two years. And I quite like it here. It's, it's cozy. It's good temperature. I have this little exercise ball, medicine ball as a chair. Little lilacs here. And um, yeah, I spend most of my day here just working either on the phone, editing photos, editing videos, writing emails, or just writing about ideas. And I can't stress how nice it feels to be under this big sort of roof and be able to see the forest that way, 
and that way, and just knowing that Andrew's downstairs doing her things too, you know, it's very wonderful to work up here. We thought we'd put the TV away from the main living room and put it upstairs so there's its own space and it doesn't interfere with social interactions. We went with an LG OLED and then a Sonos soundbar. There's also another reading corner here with a little chair and ottoman and a big sectional from Rove. The 50 enter fast. Because I truly love cooking for friends and actually Andrea and I, I wanted to have a kitchen that was obviously at the center of the house and with a big island where everybody can sit around, I can still be cooking stuff and I can still be talking to guests versus having a separate room, kind of like our parents had. The kitchen was back there and the guests would be somewhere else. It wasn't very chill. Yeah, it's probably not as obvious to you, but this kitchen here, is actually where I spend most of my time at the house. I feel like I have total creative freedom over this space, total freedom to make a big mess, although Andrea doesn't like it, she's not here, but she'd be like, oh, when you cook, it's such a mess, it's an explosion. And it, it truly is, but I think that's how cooking should go. It should be experimental and should be a bit of, a, of an event. For me, it's an event. So tonight I'm cooking some chicken tacos. Well, I'm making, you know, chicken, uh, slow, cooked, slow cooked in the oven, making some homemade tortillas with this. And uh, before I get into the cooking, let me give you a quick walkthrough of what we're working with. You might be wondering why I have two ovens. Well, I thought it'd be a good idea because one, let's say I can cook my chicken here, for example, and here I can reheat my tortillas or make some bread at different temperatures. This one also acts as a microwave or a micro -wavi. Now this thing here is the centerpiece of the house. We long debated for having a gas range versus induction and we settled on induction. So it works with a magnet. So you need to have metallic pots and pans with iron in it. So things that magnets stick to and make heat. The reason we went for induction is because it is very easy to clean, and I'm really messy when I cook, like I said. So this is just wipe at the end of the night, good to go again for tomorrow. Also blisteringly fast, let me show you. There's a mode here. It's almost like a Tesla, like ludicrous mode. Yeah, it's got this thing, speed boost. Okay, you pick your area. Let's say I want it there, and then I'm gonna hit speed boost here. And then it says B, like boost. And this boils water faster than the kettle back there, I kid you not. It is, and if you're making pasta or you're just trying to poach an egg or something really quick, speed boost. First things first is the measurements. Should we do a Spanish? Instru instrucciones para la masa. Mezcle dos tazas de harina de maíz maseca con una y media de agua. So two flour, one and a half water, water if you're from New Jersey. Mezcle bien durante dos minutos, two minutes mixing, cool. Hasta formar una masa suave. For chicken here in Mexico, they do naranja agria, bitter orange. So I do a mix of that usually and a bit of chicken broth because I don't have enough bitter orange. A little bit of pepper, peppercorns in there. Chili powder, you know, you add some spice to it. Cloves, I think cloves is cool. Oh. French secrets in there, you know. Got my chicken in there, and uh, I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of salt. A little pepper as well. Keep adding a bit of more salt. Okay, the chicken is in, and I'm gonna leave it for hour and a half, should be enough, at 350. Slow. So I have to make 30 gram, little balls of 30 grams of flour. I have a little scale here, my coffee scale, 30.5. Pretty good. So this is our scale. No, we just do it with one, right? And then we all make them this size. You gonna help me? All right, done. Let's give this a try, shall we? First one, the one we measure everything with. Middle. Fold it over. Kind of meet it middle location. And then we go and give it the oomph. You know, 10,000 pounds of force right there. 
And then we should have our tortilla right here. Ta-da! What do you think? Perfect. Good size, yeah? Yeah. Ooh, like batch. Yeah, they unstick themselves pretty well. Yeah. And this just goes straight into the cast iron. That's why we use Ziploc instead of film. I think it, it's easier to... Unstick. Yeah, unstick that's true. Them. Just got the last of the tortillas out. We have a healthy pile, 22, I think. And now I'm gonna get the chicken out of the oven. Heavy. Yeah, look at that guy. Ta da! Yeah, you can really smell the lemon, the cloves, and just working on the guacamole. Nice yeah. whole feature. Let's say you're waiting for your guests, don't do chicken or whatever you've cooked. It hit warm and then just keeps it warm. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, we went from like October, I am now in one of the guest bedrooms and actually this exact spot used to be my office for all of last year. What I like about this room is the blue glass style. It's made by a fire clay, they're in California and they make everything by hand. So what's cool is that none of the tiles are the same, they're all a bit different. And if you look at a wall from far away, sometimes it just, you can see imperfections, but I think that's cool. It's it's a good change from like the perfect subway tiles you see lined up in restaurants. There is a, also to my left is Andrea's project, which I like to, <laughs> to my left is the, what I like to call Andrea's projects. She just has an idea and just goes and does it. So this is made with beakers, uh, like science lab beakers, where she's put dried flowers. And I've been told they're called dried yarrows, that's the yellow ones, and there's pampas, the little bushy ones in the middle. What I like about this room is the views, right? Like, it's more like the introverts who usually choose this room and just nestled against the forest. And it is a good night of sleeping here. I can tell you that I've slept in every room. And with Andrew, we agree that this is probably second best, second to our bedroom. Now I'm sitting in the orange room, which is the second guest room. And actually the colors of the shower behind me that you see were inspired by the, uh, the color that the larches turn up here the tamaracks, they turned this really cool orange at the end of the fall, and we thought we should have a shower like that. Another Andrea project in this room, um, it's got elk horns that she found in Wyoming. Notable thing in this room is the photos from our friend Joe Greer, I think that's from Antarctica. Uh, we thought the colors matched the shower really well. And lastly is the nightstands, which is a very Montana package. We went to the lumber yard, uh, 20 minutes from here and we picked a massive beam I can't remember the measurement but 40 centimeters across and then it was already you know it's been had been drying at the mill for a few years and we just said you know can you cut it up and like just this big pieces and um, we'll send it and stain it and we'll have nightstands ended up being pretty cheap I think they ended up costing 60 to 80 bucks a piece I think they look good they look massive and chunky they look interesting Just sitting here by the fireplace, which is probably my favorite feature of the house. It was designed by a gal called Douglas Garofalo and built by another guy called Andrew Marco. It's called a fire orb. 
And I love that it floats in the space. It doesn't block the view. That's probably my favorite part about it. I do not want to have a big fireplace that takes the window space away. Because the view we have is quite green and open. And I thought it'd be quite elegant to just have this thing hang almost like floating over the house. I love this little thing. Now, right behind me is what I call Andrea's chair. That's where she reads, takes naps, and generally just runs the house from there and tells me what to do. So speaking of chairs, the ones right behind me were designed by Ray Eames, legendary guy who made the lounge chair and a bunch of other notable architecture pieces and furniture pieces. So these are made nowadays by Modernica, who owns the patent, and they're made out of many, many, many fiberglass shells. 16 layers of fiberglass go into making this chair behind me. And uh, yeah, I remember reading in college this book called A Thousand Chairs about all the chairs, all the chair designers in the world. And I always was a big fan, like many of us, of Eames designs. And I thought one day I'd have a proper piece of his in my house. Here in our bedroom, we have a, the bed is made by Rove Concepts. Um, it has one of these foam mattresses by uh, Tuft & Needle, which is actually everything in the house is like that. They're really nice, nice and firm. The lights are by Schoolhouse Electric out of Portland, and they're really sleek. The whole house is essentially their lights, and I'm um, really happy with them. Here's another piece that I like about the house. This is the main wing where Andrew and I live. It's a bedroom, bathroom here. Interesting piece, the tub. Designed by Mr. Patrick Messier for wet style. It's called the BTP, B, B, it's called the BBE01. And um, we can both fit in there. Andrew really wanted to have a freestanding tub. And um, I'm glad we found this one. It doesn't sound hollow as some sound. Um, it's made out of soy, soybean and another, it's pretty eco-friendly the way it's made. Yeah, I quite like it. It's nice to have just the woods outside. Art-wise, there's a print by Jared Chambers and a painting by Hugh Connie from Australia. And probably the second best part of this room after the tub is the view out of the window. In the winter, you can see the slopes and in the summer, it's just like vegetation. It's like being inside a little jungle and I really appreciate that. And that's it for the house tour. I could have shown more specific pieces, but I wanted it to be a good mix of peaceful moments and interesting stuff and things that we like. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is the first video that I've filmed and edited myself in, gosh, six, seven years. So let me know if you like when I do that or if it's just worth just having an editor do it and keep me just making photos. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. There's more coming. Yeah, thanks.